I think one of the, the testaments of how you know great a drummer you are that is in the book is that when you played Egypt, you actually played with a broken wrist, I according did. to that. Yeah. <laughs> which God. I didn't know about. I, I hated that that happened. I mean, it was like, how can you fall off a horse two days before you're going to go to Egypt? <laughs> what can you should fall off a camel you? if you're falling off anything. You also played Red Rocks like that too, right? Well, yeah, yeah, because that was before you. Yeah. I was yeah. on the way there, and so at Red Rocks, matter of fact, I had the uh, doctor put the, the fiberglass cast on it was my left wrist, and I had him put a space in there for the drumstick like that. It was <laughs> a stick, and I thought, oh, that's going to be cool. And the first hit was, uh-uh, yeah. and it's not working. That was really a bad idea, <laughs> but it healed pretty fast, yeah. and it works today, so it was good. Yeah, and I guess you know, speaking of kind of the, the Dead's classic days, you know, one thing I don't think a lot of people know is that you know Jerry Garcia's first album. Uh, which spawned a lot of classic Grateful Dead songs. You were actually the only other musician who played on it, and mm-hmm. and really, you know, kind of brought that ethos of the Dead to the songs. You know, right. talk a little bit about those sessions. Well, Jerry had this music in his head, and, and he didn't have the, the words yet. Yeah. So we set up. He was on a grand piano for a lot of it, and I had an uh, isolated drum booth. Okay, and uh, we would just start jamming on feelings, and just and the wheel came out of it. Yeah. Because Hunter would sit in the control room and hear, hear us jam, hear us play, and he'd sit there and scribble words down. He'd run out there just like he'd been writing the Declaration of Independence or something. And, ah, is this one, Jerry? And, and oh, this, this phrase is a little too long. It won't fit in this section, you know, that kind of stuff. And then a bunch, like you just said, the staples of the Grateful Dead kind of came from those sessions. They were fun as hell to do because yeah. it was just me and him doing it. So was, it was really easy. Was Robert Hunter, what was the mood like? I mean, this I, I never thought of this before, but... I mean, you and Jerry are obviously jovial people, and you made jokes, and you laugh, and you're lighthearted. Not that I was there, but you and I do that, and I imagine that you've been doing that your whole life, especially with Jerry's personality. <laughs> yeah, right? right. But with Robert Hunter, uh, you said to me something the other day about how he's very serious, and, and I mean, obviously, he writes these words that people are going to be quote when people quote the Grateful Dead, they're usually they're quoting Robert Hunter, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. that's going to happen for you know a, another century, if not more. What uh, what was he like in those sessions? Though was he very? Did he approach it with that the, the weight of that, or did he? Did there, he? There was no weight. There was the only. Yeah. It was the total freedom of creativity. There was no rules. We weren't doing anybody's songs. We were making them up right on the there spot. There should have been rules because yeah. then you and Jerry would have broke them. <laughs> yeah, we had, well, they, they didn't, there were no rules to break. It was great, you know. So, and I guess around he he was serious. To answer your question, he he was yeah, in, he yeah. was in there seriously. Uh, trying to figure out words, which is amazing to me. Yeah. I mean, these right. words are coming off the top of his head, the, the words to Wheel and Deal and the other songs that are on there. Yeah, I don't think people realize how you know, improvisational his words were in that sense, you know, that he was actually just kind of making it up on the spot. But around the same time, you know, the, the dead back Bob Weir on his first solo album, Ace, can you talk a little bit about those sessions, which was kind of like the opposite side of the coin in which you guys were really, you know, the backing band for a singer, which happened to be a member of the band. Mm-hmm. Those sessions happened almost the same time. Jerry's were done, and then Bobby was doing his sessions. They were in the same recording studio, different uh, rooms. Um, Bobby had his songs pretty well mapped out, and, and he had them, us play them in a certain way. Yeah. And, and those sessions were a lot of fun, too. That's, see, that, the whole thing about this is that Wally Hires, that's the name of the studio, right? Mm-hmm. It was, it was the, the center of the musical recording scene in San Francisco. The Airplane were there. Uh, Crosby, Sills, and Nash were there. Uh, all the best cocaine got used there. <laughs> um, and it, pro- speaking of that, the, uh, the <laughs> echo chamber was next to the, the men's room. Yeah. And if you, if you had the chamber turned up once in a while, you hear that, that telltale sound, you know, that, that breathing, that heavy, heavy nostril breathing, right? You can hear it on the tape and then just take it over, do the take again, get the people out of the bathroom. It's pretty funky, but yeah. funny. We laughed like hell. You never got caught yeah. in that bathroom, I think. No, I, I just did it in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> like a true rock star. <laughs> well, you know, I guess, you know, looking ahead, you know, you, you are uh, playing the Fairly Well shows with Tran Anastasia, who you've played with in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk about the first time you heard Fish and, you know, kind of what struck you about Trey's playing and, and then having played with him and even having a short lived side project with him, how that you know, your, your relationship has developed. I, I, I love his playing, and he's uh, another one. He's an innovator. He's, he's creative in the moment, and I like any player that can do that, and he does it really well. We, are you talking about that thing I did at uh, Warren Haynes yeah. Christmas? Um, Cereal Pod. Cereal Pod, called, yeah. <laughs> that name, by the way, came from a mistaken text. Uh-huh. And when text first started, yeah. they weren't very good, uh-huh. right? Yeah. And, and, and that came out. And, and they, Billy they never that doesn't always spell everything correctly. In the, right. In, what was it supposed to be called? They, they always he uses a lot of emoji, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Little the one, the, the one with the shades. <laughs> I can spell them. In the yeah. lightning bolt. In the lightning bolt. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you when you first heard Fish, you know, did you say like this is clearly a band that grew up listening to the Grateful Dead, or was it kind of like 
other people to piece that together for you. I never really listened to bands like that and thought they were like the Grateful Dead. And I'm not talking about bands that obviously are cover bands, but the mm -hmm. Grateful Dead, like my tune. But uh, <laughs> um, I listen to see what the band has to say for themselves. Yeah. What are they coming across with, you know? And, and they're great. And I play with Mike uh, on Rhythm Devils tour, and, and he's a wonderful bass player. Yeah. So. And he actually helped uh, help form one of your solo bands before he mm -hmm. dropped out of the solo band, right? right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talk a little bit about how you, you know, first met Mike and how. You, you know, kind of your musical relationship with um, I He used to come to Dead shows all the time. And he would, and he would you know, introduce himself, and, and we just started meeting at shows and hung out, and, and, and that's how it started. Yeah. He'd come watch us play. And he recommended Scott, who played with you for a while, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Uh huh. And also uh, O'Teal right. for BK3. That was a great band. Yeah, yeah that was a fun band. I, I really enjoyed that band a lot. Uh, you also stayed with his parents. <laughs> that, that's how close he gets. Right, yeah. <laughs> stayed with his parents in Costa Rica, right? Especially with a refrigerator full of beer. Yeah. <laughs> One six pack. Yeah. <laughs> we got you covered, Biller. All yeah. the beer in the world in there. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, Mike, and your parents. So Mike Gordon also visited you in Hawaii once or twice, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, actually, that's it's. He lived with me. I'd, well, he yeah. stayed in the same room that I stayed in one night, and I couldn't deal with it because there were cockroaches everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Benji's got a bug thing. Yeah. That was nothing, though. You should have seen poor Benji when we were in Belize writing a book. Right. And he had the downstairs bathroom, oh. and we had this house right on the beach. Mm -hmm. And me and Amy, my wife, we were upstairs. And this poor guy got up in the morning, looked like somebody shot him with a shotgun. <laughs> he had these red dots everywhere from sand fleas. They're, they're so small, they can get in through screen. Wow. Yeah, right? it, it is, it, it, we did everything in and, that room. Well, I, and I they know, loved him. Yeah. New blood. Yeah, like, <laughs> uh, 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 what's not to love? But, it, but, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't know Billy that, that well at that point. So I was like, I came out, I totally restless sleep and yeah. got all bitten up. He was like, you, you okay, brother? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Trying not to complain. You got another room? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I've led a kind of an unusual life. I was a 16-year-old kid when I started playing with the Grateful Dead. I was following my bliss. Jerry was lead guitarist. I was the rhythm guitarist. If you don't have an ego, you can be the best number two on the planet, and that's kind of what Bob became. The music was an adventure. The people were an adventurous group. You just had to see it to see it. Mine has been a long, strange trip. 